shift it back and forth, going back to the Diffusal Blade to try to be faster. And PA is a hero, if you try to rush this Desolator and you lose a single fight, you're gonna fall off very quickly. So you can see he already has it queued up, this Battle Fury, and they're gonna play a little slower game. And the Tiny's gonna have to make a lot of the early moves for a team. Not often that you see four heroes get hit with the Nova and Mira. Pretty far forward there as a three-person boundless strike. They throw out the Scatter Blast. That's gonna stop LGD from stepping forward anymore. Early 5v5 just for the fans here. But it will just settle on back. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. They did it for you, that's right. <laughs> Crowd already loving it. This is also a mid snapfire, which we didn't talk about too much. Mm -hmm. We've seen this, I think, uh, like South American teams really like running this. Uh, I think it's... It's either going to crush the game or it's going to look lackluster. There's a lot of uh, different timings on the hero. Yes. He especially needs a BKB, he needs the shard, he needs blink, some go boots of travel. And it can be hard to line up all these timings in a way that you're able to use your hero consistently through the game. But you're also not falling behind because once you fall behind on this hero, it'll fall flat. This level 20 talent, very big on the hero, but it's a long time away. Yeah. You need 20 levels. It's kind of a very strange mid game fall off, especially for a mid hero, that's where that's you're expecting to sort of be peaking there to like provide for your carry, but sometimes with a snap fire, maybe you don't perfectly snowball and you have to wait for that later, like BKB, heavy physical damage, and, and get into the little shredder later on. So uh, we'll see if Toronto Tokyo can keep it rolling in his favor. The, the one nice thing is one of the big issues with the hero is your team will get bait into being like, guys, I'm going to blink stun them. I'm going to buy the right. shards. And when you need to bait your team into that, it, it forces you into a role where you don't have a BKB. Mm -hmm. So this game, he has a Mars who's going to go in first. He's probably going to rush a blink on the Mars so he can feel better to sit back, maybe press his ult, get a couple rounds of spells off, and the initiation is not all on him. Yeah, can play a little bit more clean up and hopefully accelerate a bit better off because of that. Cool. And at the same time, he's also versus Phoenix. So he has a different role in the team fight. He has a lot of magic damage for the timber. So it's a very good snap game. He's, he has the tools that he can use this game. Well, we'll watch if uh, he's able to make it happen. Going to need to get out of that mid lane first and can see uh, Maposhka take that pendants first. So wants to be able to get some good pressure there onto Faith Beyond uh, if they can catch him a little bit out of position. Need to get that level two first, though. Yeah, pretty tough versus uh, the Phoenix, though. And yeah, as, yeah, maybe get that level two, find a creep that could help out uh, in this situation, be it like some mana burn and maybe even a, a dispel. Why? Why? Getting ran down, gonna salve, try and run. Does have another blast, needs to Nova to keep Mira away, but the dispose, and yeah. uh, that's gonna be first blood drawn by Mira, taking down Crystal Maiden. The tip also comes out. Mirror's also going to pull this next wave. So this lane's going really well for Spear right now. Every time you get multiple pulls off in a row, your off energy is going to get really farmed. And Mars is the type of hero that he kicks the enemy carry once he's level 6. Even with a snap, snap is one of actually the best heroes to TP because of how long range her ult is. That if any time that the Mars gets arena and the snap is level 6, they can just TP to a kill to any side lane. Yeah, one of the most proficient teams in the world that is is Beast Coast. They would do yes. it all the time, where they yes. would just have these side lanes with stuns, usually Hector having a stun, setting up for the early rotation from the snap fire. So Toronto Tokyo, I'm sure, will be looking for those early kills. Time to get on a timber, though, of course, uh, with that uh, low cooldown on the timber chain at all levels. Trying to get up close there and does get the count to four. Yadaro trading hits with Faith Beyond in the trees. And you can see the value that you get just from getting that extra pendant out from Mafoshka. A couple more punches. Uh, so far, so good up top as Timber a little bit behind. Not a huge amount, though. Yeah, this Timber side here is something that's been really popular for a very long time, it seems. He is pretty stable. Spear? Can they do anything else here to Ame? Mira thinking about it. Rebounds in, goes for the Dispose. They turn to fight a couple more times. The Frostbite's there. Collab still getting chased down by Y. And likewise, Mira chased on the other side. A good spear away. And with a Phantom Strike still ready, Ame will not be punished. Definitely one of the downsides of PA as well, like constantly filled sticks on, on both heroes in your lane. Oh yeah. It's also, he has no built-in regen. So anytime that the PA takes a lot of damage, oh, a lot of mirror, maybe. Nah, he's yeah, once again the sticks going back this there. Spear. Well, they find a kill instead on Ame. So got a little bit too aggro and punishing with that stick bait. Oh, it looks good too. Coming up from under the tower, thinking this is their chance on the Marcy, but punished hard there. These things always are forced to be aggressive, just the nature of the hero, which is why a lot of people say it's volatile. You're never really gonna sit in the lane and sit back and. The, the dagger is better when it's used aggressive. It's been nerfed so much mana cost that it sometimes will give more to the enemy when you just cast on them. Yeah. Well, 
as we were talking about. Um, going to be watching for some of those rotations in a little bit here once they get up to level six. And in the meantime, it's just kind of a battle of the bullies as Maposhka is going to chase ZinQ all the way back across the river there. As he's trying to get into the Tranquils. He did get his guy, though, right? Got, oh, yeah. Got the, uh, the Purge creep there, so very helpful. They're trying to make it go into the timber, perhaps, and those fire spirits come out. Yeah, mid's, mid's going nothing's insane way a little, and we're probably going to see a big rotation from Tiny as well. Both of these mids want to get out of their lane as soon as possible to kind of break down these lanes. As, as you can see, both side lanes are kind of close. No one's crushing too hard. Chase, why? Again, under fire, and Team Spirit get another kill. The spear there just to apply extra pressure to Ame, and yeah, this bottom lane. It is just going all Team Spirit's way. And I have serious concerns as to how this is going to go once Snap wants to move, because, like, Timber, not a great target to move to. Like, sure, maybe you'll get the kill, but bottom just looks so much safer. And, like, what kind of a response can LGD mount if they decide to come to this bottom lane? And if you kick this PA out early, she's not the quickest farmer of the jungle. Yeah, she doesn't want a jungle. She kind of needs to take her lane, so she'll probably end up taking this Timber Saw's lane. And when she goes to top, the Timber Saw is not really going to have a place, because, again, he, he won't survive this arena Snapfire combo either. No. He, he needs to, they, they probably are going to need to group up their heroes really early in this game. Maybe use this five minute siege, this 10 minute siege and try to take a tower. Well, so far they've had some really good answers here. And we see, I mean, this hasn't even been off the first pick gen. It's just that sort of later rounds of the draft that we saw the Mars pick that has worked out so well for them pairing together with this Marcy. Um, and for LGD, they need to come up with some answers. And right now, I mean, PA is just getting nothing here. Absolutely nothing in the lane. Yeah, right now, I think it's showing the difference in the supports for both teams. I, Spear has kind of the best laning supports in the game in the patch right now, and Marcy and Chen. Chen significantly more so than any other hero, but even Marcy in these aggressive lanes with Mars or a lot of the range heroes people are picking kind of to crush these lanes. And LGD kind of went with more team fight, little slower heroes that want to get their spells off, but they also need levels. Phoenix needs a lot of levels. Crystal Maiden is okay if you're able to win the lane, but when you start losing the lane on Crystal Maiden, she's very slow. She has no mana. No level. She, she's kind of like a, a volatile support in that sense too, kind of similar to the PA, you know, sometimes you feel like you're absolutely owning on this lane, you get like your jug or something, but when you're just trying to protect a PA like this and she just, she can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a lot of the fours I find, but just not those like really top ones. But at the same time, if their supports do get these levels, which is probably going to be enabled by nothing to say making these rotations, they are going to have a strong mid-game timing. They have a lot of uh, ways to protect the egg with the tiny and the crystal maiden, and they have a lot of team fight and damage. Getting close to those higher levels for Faith Beyond there. Level six now done on Collapse. They pull back in Y on the Crystal Maiden. Don't want to use the, well, they'll use the arena anyways and move on in for the finish. If there was any attempt for a turnaround with ZinQ making the move, it definitely is shut down now. And in fact, ZinQ, he might be in trouble. Oh, that's pretty sick. Toronto, Tokyo in the area, a good dodge, but the dispose is there after the fact. And I mean, ZinQ can try and run, but they have the rebound, the chase with the fire sprints, even drop it, just the ulti. Team Spirit not messing around with the early kills. All saves, he made them work for that. Like, they had to spend so much more than they wanted to. Just because he was, like, so perfectly spaced, but like, avoid nothing to say. This would be a big turn if they get at least something here, but the rebound! How is this hero fair? What was that? Mira tries to get away, disposed to escape, but in trouble. They finally bring down that Marcy. What's the thing about Dota? No hero's fair. You know, we, we want them to all be a little bit unfair. That's what makes the game fun. Oh, come on, it's very fair when all your spells have two two things they do every single spell. But that was the, probably the first big rotation from Spirit. They used both their ults on the Mars and the Snap. They got both supports, which isn't the best, but anytime you're able to actually get these spells on cooldown, you're able to make them move, rotate. Even the Tiny has to leave mid. It feels good. It never feels bad to get kills. Oh, very good kills to get. Five to one is the start for Team Spirit. And nothing to say, he's going to have to be the one that makes a ton happen. You can already see queuing up the Blink Dagger is a DD ready, knows that he needs to Radiant's carry the load for his squad, um, along with likely the Timber Saw as well. Yeah. Faith Beyond's trying to make as much space as possible. Ooh, he cuts the, the tree top. top. Yeah, very nice. Nice combo. Marcy's walking over though, so he might be in trouble. Snapfire is also going to TP. I mean, if they can catch Faith Beyond here, this would be really good. They move on in, dispose, interrupting the chain. They walk forward, find Faith Beyond, so they move across the map, get the kills. Team Spirit just look good. 
That may have been the first time I've ever seen the Ogre Smash actually hit a hero. Yeah. He was stunned for so long. <laughs> so much chain stun. It's a lot of damage, but it's probably the last time we'll see it this game, if ever. And the, Mar the Mars is still farming up. He also has a blink queued up. The Snapfire, uh, he has nothing queued up. I would assume it boots travel. It also works really well with the Chen. He can always teleport to creeps. He can show up to every fight. And he'll probably be the one that's going to collect a lot of the farming side lanes. Hunting bounties. Well, another spear thrown out and more pressure being mounted as Mira will run away from the mid. That's the DD used on nothing to say. But they can't find anybody to really grab a hold of. Is Team Spirit aggressive where they need to be and holding back when they don't have that strength? Up top is where another rotation goes. Radiant Toronto Tokyo is there with the rest of them. But. Oh, miscommunication there. Yeah, these lanes are starting to feel kind of bad for LGD. Uh, Tiny's in a position where his only good rotation is to the bot lane. But his bot lane is so weak right now. This Crystal Main is not laning there. The PA is level 7. With really not much, no no pressure on this Mars, and even Collapse kind of smells Dyer's this out. So yeah. anytime that nothing to say misses a move, his Blink Dagger gets delayed. And even though they're a little behind, they need this Blink Dagger timing like as soon as possible so that it gives space for the supports. Man, Mira just contesting that rune. And it doesn't end up being there, but yay, it's Mercy, so it's fine. But uh, yeah, that war place down there on bottom from here, scouting out those potential rotations there. And now uh, an arena drop, but unfortunately not able to grab the kill they want there with uh, Yadro being there as well. Yeah. And so they have given Faith beyond this space. Yeah, they're going to take this tower. The Siege wave is coming, and uh, you can see Otoro goes bot. Even though there's no arena, they just want to use the Siege to actually force their own pressure. Because there's a nice move by LG to take this tower. They need to open up this map, and whenever you open up the map, if you're able to trade, you're going to try to trade. And they see people TPing in, and as soon as Faith Beyond there, everybody from Deep Spirit runs out, collapse. Faith Beyond misses his Chakram, and they actually decide to go on this here. They get to dispose. The catch is there. They have the kisses from down. Will it be enough? Yes! They kill Faith Beyond. Oh, Another is... death for this Timber Saw. It's so painful because nothing to say is running to the towards the fountain trying to catch his courier for the blink dagger, right? Like oh, it, it was man. so close to being an opportunity for him to TP in there and maybe get a turnaround play. It was a nice read by uh, Faith Beyond to TP there because he knew that they could defend the tower. But I think he goes too far because they can't really take this extended team fight for Spirit right now, or they're gonna get to level six on Phoenix, which will allow them to take these extended team fights. Yeah, and they will be fighting with the uh, the bigger numbers as well since Chen is doing that little early game uh, farm towards the mech, but we'll have to hand it on to help out. Ava, toss, interrupted, but it's still enough. Mira goes down, and Toronto Tokyo also in trouble. ZQ, that Sunray, they come on in and make a quick couple kills. LGD, they strike back. A nice, a nice pause. You wait, you you know, you gotta talk about <laughs> who you're gonna gank, who you're gonna jump on for the minute of pause, and that you execute it perfectly. Spirit also probably, you know, maybe you take a step back, you forget what's happening. Yeah, you know, and they approach says, you know, I'm definitely not gonna hand to God, you guys. Just you know, you're definitely dead. So, <laughs> save that for a better looking fight. Fair enough. Fair Don't enough. The Toro and the Trico. Stunned. They turn. They find him. These are really big kills right now for the that side of LGD. So huge. That ward getting a ton of value. The Monkey King is going for a Battle Fury mm -hmm. to kind of match this Phantom Assassin Battle Fury, but when you die on the way to the Battle Fury, it slows down every timing in the game. You're already playing for a slow timing, and just every 30 seconds, every minute is just exponential. It's like a worse feeling Midas. Mm. But it gives you damage. With the invis, the toss back. Toronto Tokyo, hand of God, he saved it for that. But will it be enough to keep him alive? It is. So a very, very clutch save there at the end. Team Spirit, get Radiant out the Snapfire. Nothing to say, though. Immediately, I'll see that bomb to help up with Collapse. This would be another one. Ame tries to get it, but the arena down, walking outside. It's the pushback, the spear onto the outside of the arena. Collapse trying to hide, but the dagger scouts him out. And Ame, the assassin, comes on in for the finish. These are really nice moves by LGD. They're, they're able to hold this tier one bot, which I was very worried that they would lose it to this big five-man rotation from Spirit. But the kills from that rotation, this Mars kill, even this pressure on mid where it forces the supports to TP and use, you know, Hand of God on this, on the Snapfire. It all, it's a small plays that they constantly do every game that kind of give them this edge even when they're behind. Dyer's bottom tower is oh, under like you said, I mean, even when it was looking good, it was still only about a thousand gold lead. Uh, for Spirit. They're trying for some more in the mid as well. Can they get them? The toss back, back under the tower. Why there as well. And a quick and easy one. Very nicely played. Mirror's rebound is on cooldown as well. So they're probably going to look to dive. Avalanche is up in one. Blink Tiger's up in one. Radiance Chase. 
Stun comes out. Another toss. Faithion right on top of Marcy. And Mira dead again. It was 7-1. to one. They've evened it up. Six kills unanswered. Faithion's Yule got killed on Courier for the dive, but I don't think it matters. They're still so strong on the map. Do you think this is part of the cost of playing Chen? Like, when, when you get this chaotic play, I feel like Chen has a hard time keeping up, right? Like, they're striking at multiple parts of the map, and you get this hand of God out, sure, but, like, he's still farming in towards the mechanism, right? So he doesn't have that the great ability in these engagements, and it feels like he's sort of uh, struggling to be, a, like, an assistant here. There's no, like, Earthshaker teeping in and Fishering or something. They, they have no way to turn around these plays from LGD. Yeah, Chen's a slow hero, not in the sense of a game speed, but in terms of a movement speed. He, ha he has to walk from place to place. He has all these creeps that aren't that fast. And anytime he's able to go from tower to tower, he feels oppressive. He's so fast on the map. But because he's kind of been on his own side of the map, his tier one bot took forever for them to take. They've never hit this mid tower once. It's full HP right They're now. They're gonna move back in though. Toss back, arena down. Tron Tokyo, the mech, the hand of God, it's all there. Stun is out. Oh, now do they have enough for the full turn? Yadro up on the high ground, ready to jump in, and the kiss is raining down on Y. The crystal Maiden in trouble, couple more punches. Doesn't quite have it. The spear actually gets her further away. And Faith Beyond, he's ready to turn. They jump in, they try and blow up Toronto. Tokyo. The angle on the high ground, they get it. They do it, manage to kill it off in time. One more punch is all they need, and Mira finds it. The Marcy right on top of it, three for three. Can they find any more? The rest are gonna back out, collapse in Yadro. The two left alive from Spirit. Nice back and forth. I also want to say I really like the Snapfire build change. A lot of the players go for Boots of Travel, but he went Brown Boots into a Blink and he's going to go Shard. I think he kind of recognizes that these fights are getting hard and he needs to have an earlier timing. Because this PA, if she does get her items, is going to be really scary. Especially with her battle fury going to come around the same time as the monkey, which is very surprising based on their lanes. I think with the control as well from LG, it helps out a lot with the egg. You have an opportunity to maybe blink that perfect spot uh, coming to the engagements. Phoenix has to be a lot more cautious with the ulti for their, throughout the entire game. And what I love there from LG and the way they set that up too is that like, why saw an opportunity to maybe turn? Because he's like, oh, my ulti's coming back. Like, I want to send on this high ground. You guys hold them there. We're going to egg at the same time. And even though Y goes down, the fact you have these like double ultimates for them to be concerned with, they still get so many kills on the turn despite losing both supports. It's a, anytime you have to chase into a team, it's really scary when they have team fights. So they they baited the fight up the hill, and you they they kind of use this choke point on the bottom river rune hmm. to force all of Spirit's heroes up into a small choke point. And even the egg is on that little tiny piece of high ground, and it, it forces all of them to just go into a place where that LGD just get to get spells off. They get all the vision they need, and it, the egg almost pops too, with three heroes hitting it. I think. Yeah. They get it at the end there with the mirror Marcy hit, and it's like, th what, 2,000 gold lead right now. Um, almost there at the Valfire. Mira, get the heck out of there, buddy. Oh. It was a little bit scary for a moment. So tower's still alive, mid gone for Spirit. They still have their mid tower on LGD, basically no pressure onto it. Uh, but they're setting up top, maybe for a bit of a kill. They find themselves the Crystal Maiden and nice. Mira there to make sure that there's no way out. Yeah, Ame, just good positioning, right? Uh, having the Crystal Maiden in front of you like that is going to help secure the Phantom Assassin's that escape. Can head right Sunday. towards these uh, Ancients. Yeah, right now, uh, Spirit doesn't really have any major timings. Both of the, the Monkey and the Mars have a BKB queued up. The Snap's going to get the Shard, but for the next probably around 4,000 gold, they're not going to get much stronger. Versus on the side of LGD, the, the Tiny just got his Echo Saber, the Timber just got his Yules, and the, the PA is farming his, her battle through so quickly. So the, the LGD might hit their timings a minute or two faster and look to smoke and even Roshan. Yeah, and the Rosh for Spirit is definitely possible, but it's, it's not exactly like the fastest Rosh or anything like that either, so... Uh, but with Chen, you know, you do like those static objectives, so it could be yep. something that Team Spirit starts to look for. But for now, it is that smoke from LGD. And they're going to try and take over this dire triangle right now, get some good vision in this area. Yeah, the smoke uh, afterwards and a ward probably up on the high ground here from Y. Uh, it seems that Team Spirit are at least somewhat aware of this, hiding behind their Tier 2 tower. Toronto Tokyo only just peeking out for a moment there. There's no arena for 20 seconds, though. It's hard for Claps to fight into this. I walks forward. They get a vision right away on Namira. Needs a rebound target. Root tries to escape, and the mech is enough. Wow, they jump in. Nothing to say. Finds them both. The cookie. You can't cookie what's dead. And Team Spirit need to back away as both their supports are gone. 
Yu Spirit's in this awkward position where they need they need to get gone on because they're not strong enough to jump LGD, but they have no one that wants to go in first. They need the Snapfire to be far away to ult, they need the Mars to get his arena off, they need the monkey to get his arena off, and the Chen the Chen wants to heal. He needs someone else to get gone on. So it's kind of on this uh, Marcy to be the one who gets gone on, but it doesn't feel good either if you're not able to pull them backwards. No, it really doesn't. At least they get an Essence Ring now. It's a pretty big item for someone to maybe get in there first and, and survive the onslaught there. But, you know, Clash, he's trying to hit those big plays. He wants the, the Spear Shard here, see if he can uh, catch multiple heroes. But Roach is gone. Oh, this would be a great pick for them, though. Can they get it? They have the Arena. They have the Spear. Try and bring them down with the cookies to follow. Nothing to say is going to fall. And the rest of Team Spirit just try and backs away. Hand of God, Collapse. Gets a little bit of separation from Faith Beyond. Somebody is, well, unless TP out, Toronto Tokyo gets away at the last second. So it's LGD securing Roshan. Uh, Team Spirit find the pick off onto the Tiny still. This is a scary Aegis right here for Spirit. I love the confidence here. Still heading in with the Aegis. Blinks in. And will they end up getting punished for that? I don't think so. You also oh, see uh, Ame, after he gets this Aegis, he changes up and he's going to go Desolator because I think he feels really confident. He has two lives, so he doesn't need the BKB to save him. His team is, he's, they kind of feel like they're far ahead right now in the game based on how strong their cores are. Keep going in for more. Threatening. Have to jump. Oh, but wait a minute. Ame, up on the high ground, he gets caught. Away from the rest of them. Can everybody else show up here? Wukong's man's already down. He does have a Boundless Strike target, but they're keeping him away from him. The full combo comes out and she's gone. Assassin can take it out. He just got that Aegis. Oh no. Shades of TI. Why gets thrown back forward? Immediately obliterated by that Timber Saw. Godro jumps in, jumps out, gets off the tree before it gets cut with a chop room coming through. Toronto Tokyo interrupting the great cooking stun. Yadro still living. Can they find any extra bits of damage? The toss on in as they bring down the Monkey King. Toronto Tokyo tries to get some extra separation. Arena round two collapses so low, they kill off the CM. And a second toss, but can't get him out of there. Has nothing to say. Turned upon, one by one, they're going. And Toronto Tokyo trying to finish off this tiny. They need a few more hits and they get it. Four dead so far. They're looking to finish off the fifth. A full team wipe likely to happen as Faith Beyond 2 will die. Team Spirit, they come back in style after that Aegis. Well, maybe sometimes confidence isn't that great. You know, bravery, stupidity, the line, it can be very thin sometimes, unfortunately, for LGD. I was really surprised they were able to turn it at the very start of the fight, but they I think they chased a little too far. They got these kills, they felt really good, they saw, you know, oh, we can toss on the Monkey King. You see, I think Faith Beyond kind of pings his thing, yeah, nothing yeah. to say, like he walks right next to him for the toss, but since the change to not being able to toss out of Arena, he gets pushed backwards, and they're kind of in an awkward position behind the Tier 2. And this is where it all started, way back, you know? They, but, like, I mean, he gets poking. caught! <laughs> <laughs> and then and poor Y, I've never identified more with a, a pro player. He just has no mana for this entire fight. Faith Beyond also has no mana the entire fight. Yeah, this is the life of playing Crystal Maiden. He's just standing around trying to get charges like, oh man, my ult is really good these days. If I could ever cast it. <laughs> it's hard to imagine like how different this fight would have been if the Timber saw it of a lot of mana. Yeah. They would have bursted a lot more heroes in the fight. Dyer's they would have been able to actually sustain. Maybe that dive works out for them in the end. But unfortunately, he, would, he had low resources. I mean, it's still very, very even in this game. Five heroes smoke together from Spirit. Yadro breaks smoke on the Crystal Maiden and disposed dead. Nothing to say. It already used his blink, so he can't go for any tossback plays. He found them. I, they he got him. <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> they, they took the jungle, which was probably the... Uh, the goal of the smoke, a lot of the smokes people do aren't for for kills. They kind of have to take an area. Yep. And if you get kills in that area, you get a team fight in the area, you're really happy. But if everyone walks away, you got the area you wanted. And whenever you smoke four kills, it ends and you don't get a kill, that's when you feel bad. We've even things up here at this point now. Very much so. The, the sad thing right now is the LGD, these BKB timings are going to be slow. Both of them went for this kind of damage item right before. But they, they lost that really big fight on mid. Had he actually finished the death at that point? He had it flying to him on his core. Oh, okay. That makes more sense. Yeah. 
you know, a lot of minus armor. The interesting dynamic in this game is that even though the net worth is even, that disparity between the two uh, couple of heroes is kind of relevant. You know, PA up at the top, couple thousand net worth there, but it's also that Chen, the differential between him and the CM. I feel like he's getting a lot out of this with all the auras and, well, it's Crystal Mage only one. Yeah, this is why it keeps happening. Just a glimmer cape and some tranquils. And this is really good for the side of Spirit. Mars is 200 gold off his BKB. Monkey King is 200 gold off his BKB. The Chen has the Vlad finished up. The drums will come soon. And uh, the Snapfire has kind of everything he needs for the fight. He's going to have his BKB soon, but I don't think they'll wait. Once they get this double BKB in their course, I think they're going to smoke up with all their spells. And LGD, if the PA gets caught, if the Tiny gets caught, they have nothing to stop the arena and the Snapfire ult. Yeah, they are lacking a bit in terms of the sentries, though. All under this vision from LGD, so... Kind of just like grouping as five, moving around. Potential that uh, LG are going to see this one coming. Yeah, definitely. Once they see them all kind of grouped together there, uh, it's going to happen. And the question is, will LGD manage to... Uh, Help me clear this camp, guys. Yeah, don't worry. Yeah, both, both the BKBs are here, so they're going to instantly smoke up through mid. They're going to look for a jump. And you can see you see the, the Marcy's queued up a BKB. They're going to end up having four BKBs on the side of Spirit. And the only hero that can deal with it right now is a PA. But PA can't deal with it if she doesn't have her own BKB. Invis rune for Zing Q, ready to break smokes in the mid lane. They jumped forward, they wanted him. Don't so know confused. about the Invis. Saying, what? what happened? This must have been the tower, I guess. Um, but yeah. Unfortunate, but uh, really nice for LGD. They're, they're able to get the space off of this now. Nothing to say, I think he breaks his Echo Saber for his BKB, so now he's kind of ready. Ame is still 700 gold off, so I would be surprised if LGD just tries to push out their lanes and be off the map as much as possible. Because again, this is Spirit's timing. Mm -hmm. they, they hit all of their items at the same time, and whenever you hit your timing, you want to take your fight as soon as possible. Yeah, get out there, force a fight, get some kills, try and progress on the map. And now, leading in towards that second Roche, that, that's what they're going to stall for in LGD. That's what they're going to try and get that BKB set up for from Ame. And it looks like they're going to hit that timing, even if it is on the earlier end of a respawn. They should be prepped. You can see how these teams are moving around the map. They're kind of letting one hero push the lane, and the rest of them are moving as a ball. Because they want to always constantly be ready. Both of the teams have the ability to jump. They have the ability to team fight. They have very good team fight. And no one wants to be caught farming away from the team. No. Even LGD, the only time Faith Beyond goes to push his bot lane out is when his whole team is in the same jungle as him. Playing it as safe as can be, particularly after the little bit of the dive that came out in that earlier uh, Aegis. And likewise, Team Spirit, they're going to be up on the top side of the map. Now, the scan does turn red, goes back to green, uh, but Roche not capable of respawning yet. So if they had the timer right, then they would already know that they wouldn't be capable of going into the pit. Shiva's is finished for Faith Beyond, getting bigger and bigger on this timber saw. This guy needs some clarities. Every time I look at it, it's so low. The shard's coming out for the PA next, Radiant's which is really nice this game. It's attack. good versus the Monkey King. He can't get Jingu. It's good versus the Mars for Bulwark. It actually lets you kill him. So it's a really nice pickup. Uh, a lot of PAs will sometimes skip it instead of and not care about the break, but even the damage. I think it's 12% of their total health. Yeah, not correct. It's a lot of damage. Or 16%. Is under attack. Is he gonna they find one. Mira rooted dead. If they can get Faith Beyond, though, that would be a big kill on two. One more. Do they get him up over the high ground? He's dropping low and low, but nothing is saying. He's out, walking away from him. The heal is there from the Phoenix. The bait was too strong, and Collapse was not big enough. They can't get nothing to say. All right, Gunner, when's the Aegis going to spawn? Give me a time right now. America, stay in the game. 62 seconds. A minute and two. <laughs> I, I liked 62. That was good. Oh, my God. Oh, you were so close. That's right. I mean, that's a, a pretty good there for Spirit, the fact that Mars will be back up. An instant spawn would have been devastating. And I was worried. Mira TP to the outpost, too. And anytime you buy back and you TP in and watch your whole team TP out of the fight as you finish, it's really scary. But he was able to blink away. He has the Aether Lens, so a lot of range. And now they got to reset. Uh, Spirit did use all their ults, but they're kind of low cooldown, so it doesn't feel too bad. They're going to have all their BKBs, so they have the opportunity to fight this Roshan. Hopefully LGD has the resources and they're ready. The Timber Cell's a little low mana, but I, I think they should be ready to take this fight. Well, it's a whole new world as we go into it, though. Plenty of new items coming out. going to be a Wraith Pack finished up for Zin Q, and also those new round of neutral items. Give be careful. Man. Suddenly your silence when it wasn't an option before. True. Uh, the chaos that can come from these items first popping up is very dangerous. And not quite quite level 20 yet on Toronto Tokyo is getting closer to that 18 for the level 3 ulti um, pretending to be a haste rune uh, curious Yadro is gonna do it. it's actually an arcane which he picks up bottles and 
Again, this is on the earlier side for the Roche, so we'll see if Team Spirit get an inkling that this could be happening. They have a lot of vision up there on that pillar. The scan comes out, they know. That pillar, it has the ward. There's the no one coming this direction. And the Spirit ward has already gone away. They throw in the kisses, but as you said, it comes too late. Toronto Tokyo spots Fate Beyond. Wait, are they going for more? Collapse? Nothing to say. They're right on top of him again. Mira dies at the start of the fight for a second time. And Yabro just getting eviscerated. The big damage from the PA. It's not enough as he TPs out. But you can see the danger of this hero when you just get so farmed on this PA. They're getting to the point where their damage starts to be too low. The Monkey King, he's not going to deal damage to the PA because of all the evasion she has. She has a BKB for all the damage from the other heroes, and LGD just have this Tiny and this Timber. These heroes have looked so tanky every game we see them. Tiny is able to jump into every fight, and he gets, you know, 12 spells casted on him, and he's still half health, especially with the Phoenix healing. So LGD's, like, health is a little too much for her spirit right now. Turns into a game of uh, a little bit of delay here, perhaps, as Claps is way down the bottom alongside Yodoro, just hoping to clear out some waves and try and push them out, but LGD in a very strong position right now. The game plan for Spear right now is to force one hero to TP, and you kill the one hero before his team's connected to him. Okay. So hopefully they're going to push this lane and maybe the Phoenix, but you can see LGD doesn't push the lanes alone. Walking three heroes down, even the Timber saw more to the right to see if someone's farming Radiant's these little camps over here. Oh god, Radiant's Collapse. Oscar. Yeah, he sees some... Heroes in the creep oh, wave. And... Got caught. Oh, got a oh. Faith Beyond on target. The Timber Saw makes good use of that Shiva's, and you know another nice little answer that they have for him. 83% now. LGD. Number one looking to go their way. We'll see if Team Spirit has something to say about it. And you can understand why. They, they need to find some way to uh, to either chain stun this PA the entire way through. Uh, they obviously don't want to spend too much as well because there's an Aegis, and then of course you're dealing with the BKB. Like you're just going to dodge the BKB somehow, then re engage after. They serious issues on how to try and deal with this hero at the moment. And you can also just see the way that LGD move around the map is such a team. They use their three heroes to walk in this like primary area of the outpost, and the timber slot goes this is more a good to the way way. To do it though. If they can get nothing to say, can they chain him all the way down? Stun the follow-up, it's there, it's enough, but can they get out after? BKB TP, Toronto Tokyo doesn't want any of it. Mira has died a couple of times this game and is just gonna let it happen again. But that is the type of fight that they need on Team Spirit. Yeah, it never feels bad to get a kill and TP on the same BKB charge. You're always happy with that. They're going to get some gold, but the, the PA is going to keep accelerating. He is a full Satanic now, so if you don't 100 to 0 in one stun and he gets his BKB up, gets a Satanic off, one crit and you're full. And it's, I, mean, I don't even know how you're going to bring him down, but let's just say, you know, last time they were ahead, they were looking good, they had an Aegis, but they decided to, to go when they didn't have nothing to say. That's true. So, you know, maybe this time, hey. I'm going to hang back a little bit here. I think that's, that's a fair point. You know, you also have uh, that level 20, which can change things a little bit with an MKB maybe on the snap fire. He's getting close. He also has the quiver, the true strike for one hit, and a little extra damage, he actually which gets, could be the difference. Yeah, level 20 done. Again, I mean, LGD are definitely the ones that are in a pretty strong position right now. 10k gold up and so much of that just in Ame's hands. I think Yatoro's in this really awkward uh, itemizing position where he doesn't really have a lot of HP that he wants to go the Scotty so that he actually gets tankiness in the fight, but if he finishes the Scotty, he doesn't have a way to deal with the PA or even the Timber. The Timber will have so much armor that his damage numbers will be too low. Yeah, he's really relying on the Toronto Tug game. I mean, the, the core snap, it kind of reminds me of like an inch when you get later in the game and like, oh, Impetus is doing damage now. It's kind of the extreme version of that because all of a sudden you can get hit pretty damn hard from a snap fire at this point in the game. But it is a matter of getting the MKB first before it like really become effective. The biggest timing on this hero is this, uh, you know, level seven. Your first rotation with snap, then it's a blink dagger and the shard. Every, every timing, if you miss one on these snap, you kind of fall off. Yeah. Which is why it's a little scary. Well, 32 minutes in, and Team Spirit trying to do the best they can to delay this game. LGD, they're smoked up with four. Ame, seeing if anybody steps outside the base, and if they do, it's going to be a quick and easy jump. Might not even need to step out of their base. Creeps up on the high ground. Zinq drops a ward. They spot everything. 40 seconds left on Aegis. They're just going to use his body to probably take the tier 3. Once a tower dies, they get to drop their own wards because there's no more true sight. They kind of get to walk up the hill. So this tower is the really big thing that holds them back. And Glyph is still available if they want to use it. Glyph used, disposed. They don't get the talk back on Oposhka. He's going to get his spells off. 
BKB on nothing to say, broken on a couple. Still chasing, but collapses BKB. Yamro not with the team right now, not even in the least bit. Arena is down, catches on to several. They have a double spear with the kisses. Mira goes on in with the dispose. They find the kill on the ZenQ. Nothing to say, still dropping. Finally, they show up with the much The big jump, the stun, the follow-up. Is it going to be enough, though? They need another spear. They need more control. The Satanic is going to do too much for Mame. Wukong's oh. command now down. They have the CMO on the low ground. Starting to rip through Team Spirit. And another dispose. They pull him back in. Spear to the Tier 4 Towers. They need all the damage. They need more. They got him. Ame, he's gone. Ultra kill for Faith, Biondo. Oh, no, there's another. There's so many people that are dangerous in this game. LGD, they find a couple kills after Ame goes down. And now no Monkey King. How bad does that feel? You take down the Tiny when he jumps in. You take down the P and there's just another one. None of their cores are weak, all of them are so strong, and the Team Spirit kind of runs out of juice at the end. Once they, all of their spells and all their damage is in these ults, and these ults only last for so long. Oh, man. Well, at the very least, at least the, the tower pressure isn't that heavy from the remaining heroes here, so... No flamethrower yet, Faith Beyond. Yeah, He's no. going for the Scythe of Vice, you know he wants to hex the enemy team. Wow, standard items, how dare he? They're able to back up, though. They didn't buy back with two buybacks from the side of Spirit, so kind of expensive to still lose racks. God, and this fight, I mean, they played it about as good as you can, uh, but when you're this far ahead, and I mean, a big arena down, interrupting it all, just didn't end up mattering. It took so long to get Yadro involved in the fight as well. He was uh, 200 gold off his Scotty with his Corey in the secret shop. He really wanted to get it before he TP'd. Well, it does show there's still some signs of life here. Granted, it was with that Aegis expiring, uh, but you can see Team Spirit, when they pull it all together, there's still these moments of brilliance that can come out. Yeah, they uh, they baited LGD kind of too deep. They kept they have a lot of these spells that have kind of repositioning. They have the Spear backwards, they have the Marcy backwards, they have the just Arena to hold them in place. Even the Snap Q pushes them a little far backwards, so they're able to constantly move the fight backwards, and if, if the game was any closer, it's, fights like that would be so so in their favor. Well, Scythe comes out, though, and unfortunately, it is not a very close game at, at this moment. Awesome. 15k <laughs> lead now for LGD. Nullifier almost done on Ame. He's about 300 gold off. But uh, the MKB is finished, though, Toronto Tokyo, so without an Aegis being there, that is a, of actual concern, I would say, for I, Ame. I think these, uh, this LG, these they players have a lot of ideas about Nullifier versus these carries that get a buff. I, I played a game with Faith Beyond in a pub where he rushed Nullifier and Offlane Alchemist to counter the Ursa, because oh. it just purges over, yeah. overpower, and they're going to use it this game to maybe purge the Jingu. I believe it also purges the Chen overtime heal from his ult. So all these little things that'll get Eight. purged. Also the sidekick for Marcy. Smoke on smoke, Mira found the sheep used on her. And Team Spirit realized that fight is not gonna end well for them. Everybody gets away, but can they actually escape? They think about turning there, but Adaro, Boundless Strike jumps out. So they get one and Toronto Tokyo is still hanging out in this area. God, these, these mid players, man, they're like waiting if one support peels off or something, you go for a quick snipe. Well, he definitely knows there wasn't a ward there now, but he's going to lose true. the zone with that gem there on Y. And uh, the line is drawn. Another early-ish Roche, one minute until it spawns. LGD, once they get this Roche, uh, they're probably going to just end up trying to end the game. They finish the second Roche, they got a Rax with the second Roche. It's kind of the whole game plan, you know? The first Roche, you get gold. The second Roche, you get one Rax. The third Roche is when you try to throw him. Got the one Rax, even though it did cost him a bit there, but cost the buybacks too from Team Spirit. Yeah, and of course, they're going to want to be, try and be there for this Roche fight. Uh, last time they had the advantage of having a Pillar Ward in behind, but unfortunately they weren't able to get there in time from Team Spirit because it just falls so fast. And so getting in here to even try and contest this is so difficult because you know, you're already pushed into your base, and once you leave, it's such a risky position to be in. So might just have to uh, reside with the fact that they're just not going to get this one and try and play for this Refresher on Collapse. A lot of big items coming out for Spirit. They just finished the Refresher Orb on the Mars. They have the MKB finished on the Snap. The Scotty is finished on the Monkey King. I think he has a Demon Edge flying to him as now. So they're kind of getting all these big timings. And the Mars Refresher is really important for two reasons. Either if you get one Spear, you get to follow it up with another and chain stun them for four or five seconds. Or if you Arena and they force their BKBs, you get an Arena for free when they have no BKBs. And this spell does so much when the enemy team doesn't have these BKBs, which is why it's such a powerful hero. I actually feel like this is one of the times where I, I almost wanted the Refresher if I was LGD. You have to for be the careful, BKBs, yeah. but They see this. They immediately find a Toronto get pushed back in underneath Hex and finished. No buyback. 
Team Spirit, they get caught. LGD saw them place that ward, and that's what caused them to come out of the pit and chase after them. And this is going to be now Aegis Cheese and the Aghanim Scepter. Oh, they had one queued up, so I think he's probably going to take it for himself. Uh, it's really cool. It refreshes all his spells, even the Phantom Knives, which is a really nice spell to refresh. And there's nothing really to purge uh, from his blur, so it's not really going to be used for that, but just for constant Ooh. aggression in the fights. Yadaro, yeah, that was his TP he used. He doesn't have a way out of here. Has to jump out. He's still taking damage. Quick jump away. Yadaro might manage to escape from this. Well, the rest of the team group up. I mean, LGD's just going in for the base. They've had enough. Ame still got a little bit of DD left on him, and right. that is a whole second set of racks taken. He can't even go that way either because of Y. Now, sight set on the bottom tower. This monkey doesn't have a TP for 30 seconds. He's yeah. still stuck in the top lane. Yeah, yeah, he's not showing up either. He was too concerned about getting back into the base past the Crystal Maiden who was covering the tree line. So they're gonna take another tier three tower. And in fact, they might take more. Team Spirit, they don't have their carry. They can't fight this at all. LGD going to pick up Mega Creeps here as Yadro is just farming out Creep Waves, going to hit the jungle. And I mean, they need to go. They're coming back. Tier 4 towers now. He's still hitting Ancients. At some point, they need to show up to fight this. I mean, that's right. They need to make it go. Every spell is ready. The refresh is ready. They're trying the BKB. It's not going to be good enough, I don't think. For poor old Team Spirit Collapse, he's got the refresher ready. They finally show back up a second round of the arena. But it's not looking good, although maybe a couple bringing down. Oh, Ame, that's one light. Can they do it again? Everybody from LGD starting to drop lower and lower. Nothing to say is there, but why? With these big CM ulti, trying to play clean up here. The Phantom knives out. Ame backs out, tries to get away from the fountain where he was earlier. Clap still chasing as Faith Beyond has another round of spells in just a moment. Goes on in for the finish for Mira. The stun onto Toronto Tokyo. Faith Beyond turned to pawn, but a triple kill for the Timber Saw. They're looking for more. They lose Collapse. GG is called. LGD, they have what it took. Certainly moments of this game where Team Spirit felt like they had the opportunity. You know, you saw the, the heroes.